Welcome back to the Creature Cave, my friends. So glad you could join us. Sorry we've been on hiatus for a while, but we are back and hope to release a more regular schedule of videos for you. So let's dive into today's monster movie, which is a low-budget independent film with a wonderful title called uh, Shark Encounters of the Third Kind. Brought to us by one of the Polonia brothers, Mark Polonia, who, if you follow independent films at all, the Polonia brothers are a known name, so you know what you're going to get. And what do we get in uh, Shark Encounters of the Third Kind? Well, we get a psychiatrist who goes back to her hometown to help take care of some business because of the passing of her father and deal with some of his clients and kind of take them over. She wants to, you know, uh, maybe return to her small town roots. Well, a lot of these folks are talking about alien abductions that have happened around town, and she just thinks that maybe it's a bit delusional. But... There may be some actually uh, uh, credence to uh, their claims because there is an alien ship that has crash landed in the, the lake near town. And these aliens have taken over the minds of the sharks in the area in order uh, to protect their ship while they repair it and and uh, do uh, you know various alien things. And meanwhile, we have a treasure hunter who's going out looking for a treasure that happens to be in the same area as where the alien ship is. And we see how all of these storylines combine in Shark Encounters of the Third Kind. This film... <laughs> Yeah, I love micro-budget indie cinema, and in here, Mark Polonia shows just how much you can do with very little money. It's got a lot of charm, I thought. It's not the best crafted film by any means, but I found a lot of entertainment here to be sure, namely with the characters that we get. I enjoyed Jenny Russo's uh, Kay Radke, who is the psychiatrist who's returning back home to take over uh, her father's practice. And I enjoyed her performance quite a bit. She plays it fairly straight. She's into this character. And uh, yeah, you know, I, I loved her, her performance in here. A uh, real fun character was Camilla, though we don't get a lot of screen time with her. She's kind of the crazy cat lady, played by Natalie Himmelberger really a fun character and I would have loved to spend more time with her uh, than the few minutes that we get. And then we get Jeff uh, Kirkendall playing the uh, treasure hunter who wants to go after the treasure and uh, I, I loved his character too and found some amusement there where he's driven to find this character and nobody, you know, they're all, nobody really wants to deal with him but <laughs> you know, um, so you've got a lot of these great, crazy, wild characters. Now, speaking of wild characters, we do have aliens in here. Don't look too close to the uh, masks or the gloves that are for alien hands on these aliens who are wearing robes and... They're your basic alien. Uh, you can tell that they've uh, acquired the mask and uh, outfit from a, a costume shop by chance. So it does kind of look like the guy in a costume. But again, I think that added a bit to the charm of this. While it's not a, exactly uh, anything intricate in the detail of the design of these aliens, they, they're aliens, okay? And they shot a lot of this stuff in the daylight, so they aren't hiding a lot either. So I thought that was a pretty bold choice. Choice. As far as the sharks go, well, when they're munching people, it's, there's some practical. So they at least built like a shark teeth and kind of heads, and people are very good at making it look like the sharks are biting them. And you do get a lot of blood in the water and bloody s stuff going on. So I did appreciate that, but when we get to the underwater scenes with the sharks, it looks kind of like someone took a bathtub shark and put it in front of a green screen with compositing. Again, you're working within your budget here. I found a lot of humor in it and not much scary items in here. So it is uh, got that cheese factor really amped up. As far as the inside of the alien ship, we do actually get an alien looking cockpit, especially a control panel. And don't worry if you missed it the first time you saw it. They use the same shot of the alien controlling the sharks, pressing the same weird uh, bubbles uh, over and over and over again. So uh, I would have liked a little more variation in that as well. Um, so let's get to the monster rating on this. I mean, the story is fairly basic and it's coherent enough for you to follow. It's not really a deep plot at all. But 
for our monster rating, well, we're looking at the makeup slash gore effects in here, and they get about a two and a half in here. When the sharks are biting, they're doing the actual physical biting part, it, it looks pretty uh, fun. You know, it looks good for the budget that they have, so I enjoyed that quite a bit, and gore and makeup effects, but there's just not a huge amount of those done uh, in this film, so it, it is sparse. And then, of course, the monsters, the aliens, I did find charm with them, but they do look like they were just costume shopped uh, props that they bought on a Halloween sale. You know, uh, again, it worked for within the film, but at the same time, you're just like, okay you know it, just just sit back and turn your brain off not think too hard but again not a lot of intricacies there nor with the sharks the controlled sharks uh you know i i would have liked to see a little bit more shark action which leads me to the mayhem of this film the madness going on uh we don't get a whole lot of that there there is repeated shots as i mentioned there's not a whole lot of carnage going on not a whole lot of mayhem or craziness going on in the end we have a uh, two and a half two and two for a grand total of 6.5. So pretty much middle of the road, independent micro budget monster film. If you like that type of film, you'll want to seek this out and you're familiar with the Polonia brothers, you may want to watch it. But if you're not and you're a little more uh, like a little more mainstream and a little more upscale production to your monster films, then you'll probably want to give it a pass. And there you have it, folks. Thank you so much, as always, for listening to me ramble about monster films. I, I appreciate it. And check out all the great interviews here on the channel, as well as check out all the great reviews on the website as well. And yeah, that'll about do it for us. And I'll just say a good night, everyone.